ever since I made the map for Pearl's number, you guys have been asking me how I did it, and it's not even that hard. So if you want to make a map for your book world, whether it's a fantasy world or a sci-fi world or something else altogether, I'm going to teach you how to do that today, and it's really easy. I personally use watercolor, a tiny bit of sketching with a Sharpie, and a website called Canva, which is free. It's all free, but you can take this strategy and adapt it to fit your needs and what you like to do. It's totally adaptable. I'm going to walk you through the why behind you know, why I do certain things, and then I'm going to show you how I do it. And then in the end, I'm also going to do it just a little clip on how to actually format the map into your book because I have learned from experience it is very tricky. I actually recorded the whole process so you get to see me as I'm actually doing the watercolor and then on my screen, on my computer screen, you'll get to see me edit in Canva and you can kind of get a really good picture of what I do personally and I'll walk you through each step of the way. So let's go ahead and jump to the video. All right, so the first thing that I want to tell you guys before you even go in watercolor is make sure you sketch out your map a few times first or like a hundred times because you want to get a really good idea of what you want it to look like without being worried about it being perfect. So um, the things that you're going to want to do are kind of outline your country or countries and typically your map will be based on earth in some way. You'll want to decide on your terrain, whether, you know, desert, mountain, forest, lakes, rivers, etc., um, and where all those things might be. And sketching it out a few times is going to help you kind of rethink some things and just physically get it out there will help you decide what you want. Um, you're going to want to think of how the terrain might influence people. For example, in um, fantasy, uh, they probably live near water, um, and maybe the best kingdoms have better land or high ground or whatever. Then you're going to want to also consider, I don't know, things like volcanoes and coastal erosion, which is when the ocean chips away at the coast, which means that a coastline is never going to be perfectly straight. Uh, you want to create wiggly lines and jagged edges. You're going to want to think of climate. Think of it based on sunlight, at least in our climate, this determines a lot of the climate. Maybe you even have more than one sun like Star Wars or none. Uh, one is definitely easier since we know how the earth uh, reacts and revolves around our sun and creates the climate in our world. Um, for example, around the equator are the warmer places on earth, um, tropical, whereas you know it gets colder as you move towards the top and the bottom of the axis. Um, and so as you can see here in the watercolor, I'm making um, a desert-ish area and then the top part, the green, is more, um, it's just what I use for, I don't know, more forest type areas. And then I actually, um, I used a paper towel or a Kleenex, I think it was, to just dab away some of the water. Because you can actually pull the water up off the watercolor. And then I um, use that to create my lakes. And as you can see, um, sometimes the watercolor will kind of take over. And so that's why I am totally okay with coming in with a Kleenex and kind of pulling some of the water away. And you can also use um, a the paintbrush itself. You can dry it off and use the paintbrush to pull away some of the water. So what I have here on the bottom is um, I'm creating just one continent, so it's kind of like zoomed in. The map's not showing the whole world, just this one continent. And it's showing um, a desert on the bottom, and it's showing um, a lake, and then on the left here with the white, that's the beginning of my mountains and just a little bit of shading. Um, one thing I do want to mention before I keep going is that, um, at least for my map, everything is in black and white, and that's pretty common to have maps in black and white, but you can keep it in color. So what you choose to use as colors will matter more if you are planning to um, keep your map in color or just show it to people in color. Um, but mine, I didn't worry about doing super amazing shading or any of that jazz because, or like perfect colors, because, um, I knew that it would eventually be in black and white. So as I'm doing the mountains here, I just want to point out that the way I do the mountains is um, I create kind of a shading. So it's a white background and then the kind of the triangle shape um, and, and like it creates a 3D effect. And then I go over the gray with brown to really highlight it. And I'm actually going to go over it again. Um, and I'll go over that more later, but I'm going to go over it with a Sharpie as well to really 
highlight it. But these different layers, the more layers of color you have, as you can see, I'm adding more yellow and I'm going to add some more orange and some red and just different shades of color. Um, you wouldn't think it makes a big difference, but when you go into black and white, it actually makes um, a huge difference. You can kind of see the shading. So there I'm adding some of the orange. Um, just FYI for watercolor, this is not a watercolor tutorial at all because I'm not a pro, but the more water you add, the more it will kind of flow and move places on its own. So I will tend to um, either put water on it first and then draw it in or draw it in like that and then go back and pull water from my cup and kind of spread it around. And you can always, if you have too much, you can, you know, pull it off again with a paintbrush or with um, a Kleenex. But what you'll notice is every time <laughs> that I felt like, okay, it's kind of getting a little crazy here or it's not blending well, I would add water. And water really helps it blend well and look more natural. I also did a little just water around the outside and then I filled it in with some of the blue here, as you can see to make um, the ocean feel around the coastline. And I left little gaps around the shore because I like that white outline, um, but you can do whatever you want to. You can um, do a bunch of different times. You can explore and try different things. Um, just make sure that as you um, create your world that you consider all different types of environments like the mountains that I'm doing here, lakes, rivers, um, for example, I actually am a bad cartographer because I did not include uh, rivers. I decided, you know what, I'm pretty zoomed out. I'm actually not going to um, go in that detail. I'm going to do really, really, really basic. But you can include rivers. Um, and then rivers kind of move downwards as smaller streams join bigger rivers. And um, you could also go more in detail on your forests and your deserts and your grasslands and you can include more detail but again i was very zoomed out with this map once the map dries and this is my second step is actually outlining and so as you can see i'm making sure that i consider the coastal erosion which again is where the ocean chips away at the coast and nothing is straight so you're making wiggly lines and i love that the watercolor actually creates a lot of that for me so as you can see, it's not perfect, and sometimes I'm like, okay, which line should I follow here? But the idea is that the Sharpie outline is creating the, um, the for sure outline, and it's more bold, and I just really like how it really enunciates, you know, and I do the same thing with the lakes and just all the coastlines, basically, and then I will also go ahead and do the mountains in a second. So if you're looking you know, at this and thinking, oh my gosh, where do I even start? I just want to point out that um, my map in particular is based on, it's called the Divided States, which if that isn't obvious, it's actually based on the United States. And so my dystopian world is set in the future, but it did originally, like everything spun off of the real world until a lot of it changed through bombings and whatnot. So it's not America, and yet it is. So what I wanted to do is create, I had kind of a general idea of what, you know, our continent is like weather-wise. So that helped me figure out where the different um, climates would be. And then I also had an idea of how I wanted the bombings to have formed tons of lakes and craters, which you can see here. And I knew that generally we had this mountain range um, on the left-ish side there. So I kind of wanted to keep that but change it. I wanted it to be clear that it had changed drastically. And then I also, um, I did want to shift up the coastline completely. I wanted it to be extremely different. So it was like that was my foundation. But if you don't even have a foundation and you're like, where do I even start? Um, a really great place to start is to research different maps in different centuries, such as 17th century Europe. And you can get a good idea for um, just cool different continent shapes, um, different climates. It's really good to base your map. Don't copy anything, but base it on reality because the more it's based on reality, the more it will feel real to a reader. 
Um, and then of course, once you have like an idea of what you want, you can drastically change it. So for the mountain ranges, just want to point this out. I'm not a perfect artist by any means. And this is actually not my best mountain range that I did because I did four or five maps. Um, but what I basically tried to do is you have that 3D triangle shape. So you've got a triangle and then you have another line um, on the right to create like a third that 3D effect. <laughs> I'm not an artist, so I'm having trouble explaining it to you guys, which is why I wanted to show you so that you could just see me do it. And you can kind of see how, well, you can see which ones, which of the mountain ranges actually look more real than the others because I'm not perfect at it. And I was learning as I went and totally just guessing at this. So after the watercolor step is your outlining step. And again, I outline the borders, I outline all the lakes, I outline mountains, and I also will draw little dotted lines for um, the borders between different countries or territories or whatever you want to call it. And occasionally, like in this instance, I also will draw in walls. So anything that you feel like um, this is going to need to be drawn in versus like a computer, unless you know Photoshop, which is awesome, and if you do, I definitely encourage you to go the computer route. Um, but anything that you need to hand draw because it's very artsy, you would do that in this stage. So I just want to zoom in and I'll show you guys all the different sections of the map. And I really had a lot of fun with this one. And you can see that it's not perfect, but it just really helps to have that shading. Because when you move into black and white, those different dark and light sections are really going to stand out. So I did make multiple maps and I would encourage you guys to do the same thing. This was the second map I made during this day. And then I also did two others, this one here and this final one here, which actually is the one that I ended up going with. In the end, um, I did try them all in Canva just to see what they looked like, but whatever fits the story best, of course, is going to win. Once you get good photos of your maps, you're going to go ahead and go over to Canva. And I like to click the custom dimensions and do 2500 by 1852. And you might have to play around with this and figure out what works for you, but I played around a bunch and that was my happy place for custom dimensions. So then um, you will upload, of course, your pictures of your maps. I like to try all of my maps and just see which one really looks good. Um, of course, my, my photo taking skills are not very good. So my edges of the photos aren't great. So I would first of all crop them. And then on top of that, I would actually add borders here, as you can see. And I love using the different line functions. And I kind of, I kind of played around with it and found something that worked for me because there was nothing exactly like what I wanted. So again, you can take a look like Google 17th century maps or just any century to get ideas for cool borders because there's some sweet stuff out there. But what I did is I just played around with these um, check boxes plus I made lines on the outside and it took a long time. This is like a lot of footage that it took me to just make them perfect. And I even took these little squares for the corners to really fix those up and make them look classy. And eventually I actually did change the color from black to gray because I thought the black was a little strong, but I really like how it stands out and makes the map look really bold. So the next step of course, is I was like, I really need to see what my map looks like in black and white because that's the actual color it's going to be. And so you can use the filters in Canva to do that and remove the saturation or just use their black and white filters. So then of course, once you get your uh, color scheme figured out, we're gonna go ahead and keep adding the finer details that make it really look like a map. This next one I like to do are the lines for longitude and latitude. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and you can look at, again, some older maps to get a really good feel for what these should look like. Um, but it's just kind of, separating your map into sections basically and you'll want to zoom in on these and make sure um, if you're actually using it for your book that they are right up to the edges and make sure that it's perfected but right now I'm just throwing it together just to get a feel for what it should look like and the next thing that I like to do is actually you can go into um, the different photos and you can I had cool details like images such as a compass, which I noticed were on a lot of the older maps too. And I changed it to black and white, of course, because I wanted to keep it in the right color scheme. 
But actually, the biggest reason I use Canva, besides of course getting the straight lines for these borders, is actually for the text, for the typography. Because while you could hand letter things in, I have to be honest, it usually looks crappy. And, and the biggest issue with that is that if you mess up, it's the end. Whereas if like you have to start over. Whereas with Canva, you can mess around, you can change things, um, and it doesn't hurt anything. You can just duplicate it and make another version and compare them and whatnot. So I'm just gonna walk you through this little list right here of the text tips that I found online. Um, Times New Roman font is really standard. Hand-drawn labels, like I said, could work if you're good at it. But the most important thing is legibility, making it easy to read. So honestly, having it actually typed out is almost always better. This note also talks about how when you label in a large area, you try to spread out the font so that it can fit by increasing the font size, but you can also increase the tracking, which I'll go over in a second. And then it talks about where to place the labels, such as the top right, or if there's you know things that overlap, then you can make an exception. And then when it comes to the typography itself for ocean seas and continents, they say to do your labels with all caps and loose tracking, which just means a lot of space between the characters uh, for deserts, cliffs, and island chains to do uh, small caps, starting with a capital, also loose tracking, mountains, chains, and labels in italic, bold, tight tracking, and cities, villages, and fortress labels in italics with tight tracking. Let me show you what I mean by that because it can be a little bit confusing. So I'm just popping in some of the names for my divided states map, and um, Old York is like an actual territory or country, so I have, and so is the writer territory. So what I do is I click on spacing, as you can see at the top, and then I click on line spacing and after I've made it obviously a bigger font I will draw this little guy right here back and forth to see you can make it tighter like that and that's called tight tracking or you can do the wider spacing like this which is what I want to do considering this is a um, like a continent like an actual territory but I'll really quick just show you what it would look like if you take this territory and you uh, make it not caps and you make it just like your regular um, typography and then you can do the other things that um, we talked about where you do see how it's wide tracking but you can make it really tight tracking like that and you can make it a smaller font and these are your less important places um, maybe towns or whatever and so you just kind of basically use typography to differentiate between things and you can see how it really makes a difference if you make it tight tracking and small it's clear that it's more of a town versus a country. I won't make you guys watch me create all the other maps in this much detail, but basically you get the feel for it. You have to crop it, you can add borders, uh, you add those lines so it looks um, like it has the longitude and latitude, the black and white to really get a feel for how did your colors actually turn out from the watercolor, because as you can see, um, even though I do different types of saturation and filters, they actually turn out really different. And then of course I'll add in um, all the typography and see does it actually fit very well. And look at this one, it looks way more um, bold and it just, the shading really worked on this one. So as soon as I saw this, I was like, wow. Um, and then of course I just, I really get down to the details. So if I wanted to, I could have added some really, really cool uh, sketches and stuff that Canva has. Um, if you pay for Canva, then you actually could get some of this stuff just through your monthly membership or whatever they do. I don't pay for Canva, so instead um, you would pay for each image. I think it's like a dollar an image or it'll say on there how much it is. And you can see they have really detailed stuff like these trees. If you wanted to add a forest, you could definitely do so. And Oh my gosh, they just have like all over the place different things you can add. I think I showed you guys some um, more realistic stuff, but they also have like castles here. Um, if you were doing a fantasy type place, look how cool that is. It's so cool. And uh, especially the detail on some of these would look amazing on a map. So I might do that someday, but for right now, this was more sci-fi, there's no castles in here. So I just wanna show you guys, if you do choose to, you can just purchase it and it, you have it for 24 hours if you want to add those details. Okay, are you guys ready to see it? <laughs> here it is. This is the final map for Pearl's number. 
I am so proud of how it turned out. I just, I loved learning how to do maps. I loved all the different efforts at creating it. It took me a lot of tries. This is probably like the fifth watercolor and um, just playing around in Canva for hours, but it was worth it. It was so much fun. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think of it. It's not perfect, but it's definitely something I'm very proud of. So let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear. Just a note on actual formatting, when you put your map into your book, most of the time you want your map to extend right to the edge of the page. Like I almost just gave up and had my map be kind of in the middle, but I wanted it to go to the edge of the page, like a real map, like cover the full page. So that's called a bleed. When your map or your image in general extends past the margins of the book and out to that, like that, quarter inch or half inch, I don't even know, um, around the edge of the page, then it's called a bleed. And so there's a whole bunch of information out there on how to correctly make the image bleed. It sounds weird, but that's what you're going to want to look up. And it took me a long time to figure it out. I don't have time in this video to teach you guys, but I just want to let you know it is possible. It took me forever and it's really confusing and tricky, but there are people out there, there are videos out there that will teach you how to do it. In fact, I use the KDP website um, to publish my novels and they have a bunch of video tutorials on there teaching you how to make your image bleed and then to fix the margins and resize the book and all this jazz that you have to do. So just know that if you choose to put this in your book and you don't have a formatter and you're doing it yourself, there are going to be some steps but it is possible. Maybe you can hire a formatter for your book and they can just put it in for you. And if you're just making this map for fun, then it doesn't even matter. But whatever the case may be, I hope that you enjoy your map. I hope you love this tutorial. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Ring the bell next to the subscribe button if you wanna be notified every time a new video comes out because next month in November, I'm going to have a video a day for the first two weeks of the month for the release of Pearl's number. FYI, if you wanna see the map in person, hold it in your hands and actually look at it, all you gotta do is buy the book. And Pearl's number is officially available for pre-order right now. I'll put all the links below so you can go buy it, whether ebook or paperback. And yeah, I think that's everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.